Here we are in the discussion portion of the fasteners lesson. And uh, the purpose for this discussion, these discussion questions, is that almost certainly we have failed to include some information in these lessons. We do our best, but there are probably a few areas where we just didn't think to include the information. So the purpose of these discussion questions is to give us uh, just like an opportunity that hopefully will organically lead to anything we haven't discussed and uh, allow us to, to discuss it in kind of a, a, an open, free format. So with that said, let's scroll down here on the fasteners lesson. And so a, a question here that, uh, that Raf had in, in regards to socket head cap screws are arguably the most common type of screw used in mechanical design. And he asked, why is that? Um, so, uh, do you want to take a stab at why that might be before I answer? Uh, honestly, I have no idea. They all pretty much look the same to me. I'm, I'm a beginner at this, so maybe if you could highlight some, some of the pros as to why one may want to choose this screw. Sure, yeah. And actually, since I made that last video, I have been uh, looking at more and more items, common items just all around. Uh, around the house, around the office, etc. And I, pr I should probably put a qualifier on this statement. Socket head cap screws are probably not the most common type of screw used in general. Um, in like machine design applications, I would still say socket head cap screws are the most common. But in everyday items, you actually see quite a few just Phillips head style screws. Um, and so uh, that's the qualifier I'm going to put on here. What's a machine design application? A machine design application, that's a great question, is like more of an industrial uh, assembly. Like, I don't know, you, you might have like an, an automation machine or um, something industrial. Maybe it's like a, a test fixture used in a medical device laboratory or something like that. Not, you know, your, your typical consumer product where you've got probably some kind of plastic enclosure with maybe there's a printed circuit board inside or something like that. What about this microphone that we're using? It's off screen, but here on the left. Let's see. Let's take a look. This microphone right here. Let's see what kind of, what kind of screws. I, I would say this is more of a consumer product. And so the screws maybe are, oh yeah, you can see them. Right there, they are Phillips head. Phillips so they're not style. these. And what's the reason behind it? How come they're Phillips head and not socket head screws? Yeah. Um, my take on that would be um, in, in the consumer product world, a Phillips style driver is probably more common than a, an Allen key, you know, that hexagonal shaped driver. And so it might just be easier because of common tools for a factory to have their, their assembly workers um, install Phillips style screws. Now, to be honest, I don't, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's one guess that I have. Uh, the, the reason that you would, you would uh, use a, uh, a socket style screw, one with like this hex interface here, is that you get much better torque. Uh, it, it's a lot easier to apply torque to a, a hex style screw than it is to a Phillips style screw. Uh, think about putting your, your, your hex rent or your hex driver into the head of this, this screw. It's going to be a very secure uh, interface between the driver and that screw head. And, and when you rotate your, your, uh, your driver, it's going to transmit all that torque directly into the screw. Whereas with a Phillips head style, as you rotate your driver, it, it, and you've probably had this experience before, in fact, I'll just ask you, have you ever tried to uh, install a Phillips style screw with a Phillips screwdriver and um, had the screwdriver kind of back out of the head? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's common with Phillips style screws. But that won't happen with a, a socket head cap screw like this. Uh, the geometry just doesn't permit that to happen. I have an idea. Uh, given that for consumer products, manufacturers are usually trying to cut costs, could it be that a Phillips screw costs less than this screw? 
That's probably true. Yeah. In fact, uh, I, I'm. I would expect that Phillips screws are more prevalent in general in the world. There are more of them. They're produced in higher quantities, and so naturally they would be less expensive. Yeah. All right, so that covers it. So let's dive into the questions now at the bottom. Okay. So let's see. First question. Why would a designer use screws in an assembly instead of adhesive? I'm going to give it a shot. Go for it. Um, I think with the adhesive, the screws are longer lasting, more durable, and... With the adhesive, you also have to take into account if it will adhere to both sides. And I think durability and affordability, perhaps. Uh, like you said, sc screws are everywhere. And the adhesive, just looking at the 3M website, which is a manufacturer for adhesives, uh, they're not the cheapest. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, compatibility, material compatibility for sure. Uh, adhesives are fickle sometimes they work really well but they're fickle and you really have to be careful on your material compatibility um, what about so we, we've talked about alignment in another video and alignment in this context let's say you have uh, let's say that my hand is a plate and you want to align a second plate on my hand when I when I say align I mean position relative to one another. So maybe the alignment I want is like this and, uh, and, and not, not like this. If there are two screw holes going through my top hand and two threaded holes going through my bottom hand and you put two screws in there, is, is it going to force my hands to align or not? I can't visualize that. Okay. Can you draw it maybe or let's see. When you showed us that I'm thinking like a sandwich. If we have a top plate that looks like this, and let's say we've got a hole here and a hole here. And then we've got a bottom plate that looks like this. And we've got a threaded hole here and a threaded hole here. And ultimately, I want that top and bottom plate to be aligned like this. So the black is on top of the red. We have our, our holes going through there. That you could say that's aligned versus and alignment is up to the user. It's it's subjective. It's based on what the user wants it to look like. So you could also say maybe you want them aligned to look See if I can get this to look right. I see that. That's where you were like this. I get it. Right. So that would be, you know, a, a different alignment. You still have your hole here and here. Uh, but if if our red holes you know, we showed our red holes in basically the same place as we did up here. So our red holes in this sketch, I'm going to draw them dotted to indicate that they are underneath that black plate. <clears throat> so if we had our, our holes like that, and you wanted to use a, an adhesive, and there was there were no other features that would tell you like what that alignment is is supposed to be, would it be possible for an assembly worker to put these two plates, to assemble these two plates to uh, each other incorrectly, like, like is shown here? Okay, so if I understand correctly, uh, a benefit of using screws or fasteners would be, well, screws in particular, for this example, is that it's easier for assembly because 
uh, doesn't leave it open for ambiguity. Like, you know exactly where it's supposed to go because there are holes. They right. just have to place it in. Right, yeah. And with the adhesive, if someone loses concentration in the assembly line, then they may just mess it up with the adhesive. Right, it's possible. Now, I mean, realistically, usually there will be some other alignment features there, but maybe not always. There could be situations in which there aren't any other, uh, any other alignment features and you need to rely on, you know, the screw holes to align it. So, that, uh, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Let's go to the second one. How will a designer know what size screw to use in his or her assembly? What thread size, head style, length, metric versus English, etc. So for this one, I know that we're CAD models, uh, we're on SOLIDWORKS, and then we can make a, a hole in, the, in whatever model we have in SOLIDWORKS. But I don't know, we haven't touched upon how to choose the, the kind of thread that's going to go in the hole and what helps us make that determination. And then the second part of the question is, how do we match the, the screw with which nut? I remember from looking at the nomenclature that this part indicates internal or external thread, the 2A or 2B, the last part. So 2A would be this, external, and then 2B, internal. But then I don't know what else to do so they match. Sure. All you really need to match is the, the, the thread pitch and diameter. So if you have a quarter 20 nut or a bolt, so you this... Think that we could write these down? Or like, because I'm very visual, like if you could write down the numbers and stuff or no? Sure. So this is a quarter 20 uh, screw, uh, just as an example. And if you wanted to make sure that that screw threads in correctly to whatever it's threading into. But when you say a quarter 20, does that mean one fourth and then the number 20 next to it? That's how you would write quarter okay. 20. A quarter 20, got yeah. it. What about the last part of the nomenclature? The, uh, I think one of them has like an F and then 2A or 2B. Do yeah. you put that or no? No, you, you typically don't. Just the thread diameter and the pitch are typically all, all you need to specify. Sometimes you might need to go a little beyond that with like, you know, your, your cores are fine. But, well, there, quarter 20 is a standard size uh, and quarter, I think, 28 is the other standard size. Most uh, screw diameters, thread diameters, will have a coarse and a fine pitch. That's one half, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. There we go. Uh, so most thread diameters will have a coarse and a fine pitch. Uh, so 28, that means 28 threads per inch, so more threads per inch than 20 threads per inch. This, this would be the fine pitch. And so you don't really need to, you know, write out your UNF or UNC because it's it's already contained within... That, that part of the nomenclature. So back to the original question, how will a designer know what size is screw to use for their assembly? Thread size, head style, length, metric versus English. Yeah. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, what size of screw? Well, depending on the thickness of the material, say if we use, for instance, these two plates, I will want to know how thick each one is. Um, because I don't want a screw that's going to be sticking out with like a lot of space back here, mm -hmm. like a big screw sticking out there. I would like the screw to end where the plate ends, right. ideally. Um, depending on aesthetically, like someone may get hurt if this thing is sticking all the way out there. So the, the length of the screw, I think, would be very important. And I, I don't know about thread size. What, what are the implications for that? If... Uh, higher pitch, I suppose, like more, a higher number here, uh, more threads would indicate something that is something that will stay better. I don't know if there's a relationship between that or not. And head style depends on the pressure that I need to apply. So maybe like the, the material. I'm making a lot of assumptions here, guys. I don't know if this is true or not. I'm a beginner. Um, the head style, like we said in the Question number one, as soon as we started this video, how much pressure we may need to apply when we're putting the screw on. If it's a material that is going to take a lot of force, we may have to look for one of these hexagonal shapes. Is that what you call it? Yeah, hexagonal shapes. Yeah. And 
Metric versus English. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that means, really. So there, uh, these, there are English style and metric style screws, um, and they do not. They're not compatible. Uh, in fact, that's been the source of some uh, some big um, catastrophes in history. People using a uh, English screw where they thought where uh, it was supposed to be a metric screw, but uh, they're. How do I say this? You can use whichever one you want as long as you're clear about which one you're using. They work the same way. They both have a thread diameter and they both have a, a thread pitch. Um, you just need to know which one to use, which one you want to use. And and honestly, a lot of the time it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, in overseas, like if you're manufacturing in China, they typically use metric. So it might be better to specify metric threads if you're working with a Chinese vendor just because that's what they're used to, to working with. Here in the US, most shops are more comfortable with English threads. So you probably want to specify English threads if you're here in the US, but you, you, you can use either one and your, your fastener is going to work the same way regardless. How do you specify that? Do you put parentheses, metric? How do you specify that? No, so like this nomenclature, quarter 20, that is, uh, that's English. Um, it, if you wanted to do a metric 20 uh, or a metric thread, they, they always start with M for metric. So it might be N, M10 by, I, I can't remember what the, um, the, the pitch is. It, it, it's, it's actually not the pitch in metric. It's, it's the thread diameter by the distance between the threads. So maybe it's M10 by by one, and that would be a one millimeter, but you don't usually write that out. So if you see an M before your thread des designation, you know it's it's metric. Good, good to know. And okay, so how will the designer know what size of screw to use in their assembly? So that's mostly up to the designer, and it's going to depend on the geometry of their their parts. Um, so you, you brought up a good point. You know, you don't want a screw that's you know sticking out beyond the end of your part. It's unsightly. It could it could uh, present safety concerns. Um, so just the size of the parts that you're installing in is a big a big uh, factor in determining what what screw to use. Um, well, just like as a, a random example, let's say that we have um, I don't know a part that what does it look like. rather differently. some practice with my 3D sketching. Okay, so let's say we have a part like this. Uh, I'm going to look draw this again now, side view, looking at this face. So it's going to look something like that. Do you see that? Yep. Okay. And maybe there is uh, a, th a threaded hole going down here. I'm drawing it uh, as a dash line just to indicate that there's a hole in that material, a threaded hole. And so we have, you know, like a very limited space right here. And we want to put a, a screw in there. Now, like a, a button head cap screw like this has a larger head diameter, and maybe that doesn't quite fit in there. But a socket head cap screw with the same thread diameter is actually going to have a smaller head diameter. So socket head cap screw might fit in here, whereas... You have a socket head that we can see? Yeah, not the not the right thread, though, for comparison. Uh, it, a, a button head it might look something like that, whereas the same thread diameter 
socket head might be like that. So this diameter, that thread diameter is the same, but this head diameter is is, is different. Uh, which one has the smaller diameter for the head? The socket head has a smaller diameter. Is that always like that? Mm-hmm. It's always like that for the same thread size, yeah. Okay. So if you have like really limited space, you might, might, might want to use a socket head here instead of a button head. Um, alternatively, maybe you have... Uh, I'm going to draw a cross section of a different part altogether. If you had something, uh, let's say you have a, a plate here and, I don't know, another plate down on bottom. And then you want to be able to put a third plate on the top. And you don't want there to be any room, any gap between that black plate and that gray plate. But you need to screw this gray plate to the red plate. So you might have... A, a hole in here that looks like I should have drawn that dashed. Maybe you have a hole in there that, that looks like that and then you have uh, a threaded hole here. And in this case you would have to use um, a flathead screw. Right? Because if you used um, a socket head cap screw that, that socket head might be sticking up like this and it would not allow you to put this black plate on top of the gray plate with no gap in between. So it's really situational specific, situation specific, and you kind of just need to take a look at your application and, and decide from there. So will we have some exercises in the future maybe on SolidWorks in which we'll be asked to choose the appropriate screw? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Anything else about that question? See, I don't think so. Yeah, think about maybe. Oh, yeah. One thing we could say is that, uh, as far as your your length, typically you get uh, the vast majority of the holding strength in the the first two or three screw threads. Um, so there's there's really no reason that your screw needs to be much longer than two or two or three uh, screw threads deep. So, if, for example. We're looking at the side view of a socket head cap screw, right, like that. And it's got one screw thread, two threads, three. These are the threads that I'm drawing. Um, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Typically, it, it, as long as you're engaging down to this dashed line, so you're engaging all of this area up here, the first three threads, that's all you really need to engage, and you don't get really hardly any additional holding power by engaging uh, the the rest of the th threads down below. So if that's the case, if manufacturers were smart, why wouldn't they make screws shorter? Well, screws are all different lengths. I mean, you know, maybe you have uh, part A up here and part B down here. And, and these these heights are fixed, you know, this, that height and, and that height, those are fixed. Uh, and you have to have a screw that's long enough to go all the way through that, that black block and then engage at, at an appropriate depth down in the red block. Oh, if, so if I understand correctly, uh, the, screw, the screw needs to be long, so at least we get three threads right here right that's right yeah that's probably a better way i should have i should have started with that over here the bottom threads are probably the ones that you care about engaging got it yeah one that i asked um think about just regular because aaron owns a mechanical design company mechanical engineering and what's something that a designer should also take into account when it comes to screws and fasteners something that may be important whenever they decide which one to use. Anything else, or we covered it all? Mm, there, I'm sure there are a hundred other things, but as far as general items, I think we've covered them. All right, so next question. What are some problems a designer might encounter when actually installing fasteners into threaded holes? And how can these problems be mitigated or solved? Well, uh, for one that we touched upon before was the, the head how much pressure we need to put on there. Mm -hmm. And the other one would be if the threads on the part, 
so the, the hole has the threads and we're gonna install this if those threads are worn we may need to put what is it called we put them in and you screw it on um, it was a piece of hardware a helical insert yeah uh, we, we may need to use a tap a to make this insert. yeah yep so th that's what I can come up with okay so like if if you're trying to put your your screw in and it's it's just not going in right yeah and so uh, what what would be some troubleshooting we haven't covered this so I don't expect you to know the answer but I'm gonna ask anyway what <laughs> what do you think might be some troubleshooting if you're trying to put a thread a screw into a threaded hole and it's, it's just not going in maybe a it tap? gets like one or two turns in and then it starts binding up you use a tap it, you use a tap to create threads, and so if there are already threads in a hole, um, some you might be tempted to take uh, a, another tap and, and run it through there, but if there are already threads in a hole and they are not the same as the threads in your screw, um, then and you, you were tempted to take a tap and, and re-tap that thread at all, you just it won't work. You can't tap a hole that's already been tapped. Try a different screw? Try a different screw, right. So maybe you don't have the right the right screw thread, like the pitch is wrong or the diameter is wrong. Um, and how would how would you know like what the thread is in your hole versus what the thread is on your screw? I have no idea. So one way is to use um, a, like a, a thread gauge tool. Um, we have one here as an example. So this is uh, kind of a common like tool that's used. Uh, you can see that the, uh, the, the designation, like the thread diameter and pitch are ascribed onto the part. So this is 7 16 14. It's a pretty big uh, screw size, not something that we use very often, but you get down here. So like here's quarter 20. That's a really common size. So basically what you do, you get these and you try to see if they fit in the hole. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah, like 10, 24, common size. So these are cool because they have male threads and they have female threads. So you can use this end and try and screw it into your hole and see if it fits. If it does, you know it's 1024. If it doesn't, then you try something else. And then uh, if you have, you know, just like a screw like this one, but you're not sure what the thread is, so you, you could try putting it in, in here. No, that doesn't fit. So we know it's not 1024. What's the next one? Quarter 28. Okay, let's try that. Looks pretty close. The diameter looks about right, but it starts binding after a couple turns. So maybe it's quarter, but not 28. So let's see what the next one so is. So this is basically your rosary for mechanical designers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah you're, you're mechanically inclined now. We'll this around. So quarter 20, let's see. Boom. There it is. And that one just goes all the way in. It answered your prayer. There you go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Great. How much, where can we get one of these? Uh, you can get these on certainly McMastercar.com or Amazon.com. There are a lot of different places. Um, Home Depot might sell them. I can't remember right now. Cool. There's there's another kind of tool also that's common, commonly used. It's, it's this guy right here. And these are all just little like pieces of sheet metal with, uh, with different um, thread pitches cut in as, as teeth. And what you do is you just you take these things, just one of them, you kind of fold all the other ones away and just have one of these folded out and you put it against your screw and um, uh, if the teeth, you know, fit in those, those screw threads, then, you know, you got to match and you know what it is. How often do you use these? Um, I don't use these as often. Be I feel like the other style, the, the rosary, quote unquote, is easier <laughs> and, and more definitive, whereas... I, the the plus with this though is that you can it it holds a lot more thread pitches than the uh, than this necklace style does. You know there are probably I don't know forty or fifty different different threads right here, whereas the the necklace has maybe twenty or twenty five or something. Okay, so that covers all the questions I had. There was one more question, but you already answered it. Yeah. What screw to use, the fading part, yeah, we talked about that. Okay. Can one design a pitch on a part in SOLIDWORKS? Like the the whole, right? Like mating part B, is that the female, I suppose? B is equivalent to female? 
right? I, I use A and B so little that I don't even remember which is male and which is female. Okay, so the female, basically. So when there's a whole, uh, like you, uh, on SolidWorks, you tell it which is the pitch of that hole? You tell it or not? Yeah, yeah. So that's a great question. In SolidWorks, when you're designing threads, um, you're, you're usually not actually creating the threads. You are um, telling SolidWorks what, what, uh, what thread diameter and thread pitch it's going to be. And more often than not, it, it's for threaded holes because the, the male thread is typically a screw or a bolt. And those are something that we're, you, you won't be designing. You're just going to buy those from a supplier like McMaster. So you, you would never create those threads anyway. But for the holes in the parts that you are designing, you're usually not going to actually model the threads. There's a, a, a tool in SolidWorks called the Hole Wizard. And in the Hole Wizard, there are a bunch of different options and you just tell it, okay, I want this hole to be quarter 20 or I want this hole to be 832. And SolidWorks automatically sizes that hole to the correct diameter. It, doesn't, it does not put the actual thread geometries in it. It just puts a hole in it that's the correct size. Um, and then in your drawing, uh, automatically you can, you can add a note to that hole that says this is a quarter hole, quarter 20 hole that's, you know, half an inch deep or something. I've got a question here. I'm looking for a sizing chart. Oh, there's a, a link to it, I think. Yeah. Right? Somewhere there. Okay. And my question was, could you teach us how to use that slide chart in an example? Because it, from the videos that you made, it sure did sound like it was uh, something that you referenced maybe somewhat often, right? So, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, so this, this is that, that chart. Uh, and there are a few different ones out here. This is just the one that I have. But it's really useful. And I, I do reference it a lot. Um, for example, uh, we were talking about what if you have like really limited space, right? And in a design, and uh, you want to know if a head is going to fit in in a certain space. Um, most designers don't have memorized what the head diameter is. They'll memorize what the pitch diameters are, the standard pitch diameters, but not necessarily the head diameters. So with something like this, let's say. Um, I, I want to know what the head diameter is of a quarter 20 screw. Can you see it in the camera? Yeah. So, um, well, we can do 2x. So I would, I would come to this area here and you can pull it out until we see, um, let's see, hold on, where is it? Which one are you looking for? There's so much going on right now. What are you looking for in specific? Where is it? Threads per inch. Mm. I'm looking in the wrong area. Oh, yeah, I'm looking in the wrong area. Sorry. Uh, so this right here is is where I would look. So that's the quarter so size. That. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you can see right here, it tells me if I have a socket uh, socket head cap screw, it's going to be three seventy five point three seven five inch diameter. Whereas if I have a button style, it's going to be 0.437 inch diameter. So you can see the button's definitely bigger than the socket style. And it gives you all kinds of other information. If you were, uh, I mean, SolidWorks does a lot of this for you, but if you weren't using SolidWorks, um, then the, this area over here tells you what size to drill your hole out so that you can use the appropriate tap size to actually create those threads. So this is like, uh, 20 threads per inch. So the, the, you know, fine thread, you'd use a number seven drill bit. And that number seven drill bit is defined as a 0 0.201 inch diameter. So it's going to create a hole that's 0 0.201 inches. Um, the stress area is not, not really that important. Um, and then if you wanted to do like a fine, fine pitch, a quarter 28, then you would use a number three drill bit and that would produce a hole that's 0.213 inches in diameter. So there are all, all these things, they're like a uh, fraction to uh, drill size conversions, you know, so if, uh, if you wanted to know what, what 
in inches, what, what is a, well, we were just looking at the, the quarter, let's see, let's go back here. So the, the quarter inch screw size, right? Uh, we need to use a, a number seven drill bit if we're gonna tap that hole. So if we wanted to know what is the number seven drill bit, how big is that? We come over here, we find number seven, and we see that it's a 0.201. So there are all these you know conversions in here. What's like, would you say, the, the top two most common things that you look at on this chart? Um, your day to day. Or maybe that's not the right question because you're someone that's experienced, but someone that may be a beginner, what are like the top two things that they'll look at? Um, maybe like the, uh, the, the fractional to, to drill number conversion, and they have it for both inches and for metric. That's really useful. Uh, and then also, uh, sometimes you want to compare um, metric to, to inch screw sizes. So maybe, f you know, for whatever reason, you want to use uh, a, a metric screw uh, where there previously there was uh, an inch screw specified and, and you want to keep it about the same size. So like if, if we're looking at a number eight, um, screw size here, which we can see is 0.164 inches in diameter, the screw, uh, the thread diameter, and we wanted to pick out a metric size that was about the same, we would just come up here and it says oh, M4, that's a 0.157. Um, do we get any closer than that? Next one up is 0.197, so that's further away. Next one down is 138, that's further away. So okay, 157, that's the closest metric style thread diameter. So there's some really useful comparisons you can do between metric and English. Mm, I see. Great. All right. No further questions. That's okay. If you've found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires. Our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.